Hey, Shalom Shalom Yishboka. Welcome to another edition of the Half Tour Hashings. This is Half Tour Hashings number 45, um, and it's called Va Etz Chanan, which means and I pleaded, and it's taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 26. So let me, let's just jump right into it. In our Torah portion for this week, we clearly see that there is a law and a lawgiver, which comes from and expresses the desires of God himself. There is a written law, and there is a living king who carries out and makes sure that the law is maintained. Now, this passage that I'm going to read uh, from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 9 through 11, pay careful attention to the anthropomorphic phraseology. You can't help but think um, of the Messiah uh, when we read these passages, uh, because, uh, as I said, there, there is a written law, but there's also a living king. And who is that living king that comes to make sure that the law is maintained, uh, that's going to set up a kingdom that's going to be ruled by this written law. Of course, it's going to be Messiah Yeshua himself, and I believe uh, this these passages in Isaiah point to Messiah Yeshua. It says, uh, starting with verse 9, O Zion, that brings good tidings, get thee up into the high mountains and Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings. Lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid, and say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Hmm, God is a spirit, and God is invisible. So how can you say, behold, see, look, look at God? It says no man can see God and live. The only way that you can see God and live, or that, that Israel or that Judah would, would be able to see God and live, is that if an emanation came from God himself and robed itself in flesh uh, and and came forth in that manner. And that's exactly what Yeshua Messiah did. He is the divine Mashiach. He is the emanation, uh, robed in flesh, from from uh, Elohim, from God, uh, from Adonai himself. So it says, Behold your God. Verse 10, Behold, uh, the Lord God will come. He'll come. Okay, God is ever present. God has always been, always will be. So why do we need him to come? So this talks about, uh, this alludes to a physical coming, a physical arrival of someone. And as we already established in verse 9, that this is going to be a divine personage. It's going to be God in the flesh. Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand. See, more anthropomorphic phraseology. And with his, and his arm shall rule for him. Okay, now it's saying that God has an arm. We know that God is a spirit, and God does not possess a physical body. Physical things don't apply to him. So what is this, his arm shall rule for him? Well, when somebody uh, like a king or some official has what's called a right-hand man, uh, somebody that, that is kind of an ambassador for them, that kind of does work on their behalf, sometimes they're called, as I said, the right-hand man or their arm. So Messiah Yeshua, this emanation from, from Adonai himself in the form of Yeshua Messiah, he is the arm of the Lord. Behold, his reward is with him. Again, alluding to a physical arrival. And will work before him, and his work before him. Verse 11, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. Wow, Yeshua said in the Besorah of Yochanan, the Gospel of John, I am the good shepherd. And he shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom. Kind of reminds you of Psalm 23, right? And shall gently lead those that are with young. So it talks about a, a, an emanation of Adonai, which is going to be the arm of the Lord or the right hand of Adonai. And he's going to be a king and he's going to, he's going to gather in the people of Israel like a shepherd gathering in the sheep. And he's going to rule them with gentleness and uh, with love. He's going to care for them. He's going to he's going to take them into his arms. So um, it, you know, it, I think that's awesome. So I think this uh, is one passage that kind of describes Messiah Yeshua perfectly. Um, so um, so with that said, how again does this connect to our Torah portion for this week? Now this Torah portion for this week is one of the most important Torah portions. It is in my opinion, one of the central focal points of Judaism, um, period, because this Torah portion has the two most foundational cardinal 
uh, type of things regarding Judaism contained within it. That is the Ten Commandments and the Shema, the two most important things. The Shema is like John 3.16 for Jews. It's the very first verse that, that Jewish children learn. You know, and it's one that they'll always that they'll always know, always remember. And you know, the the, the Ten Commandments kind of sum up the six hundred thirteen commandments. So it's so it's integral and foundational that we know what the Ten Commandments are because it helps us to understand the six hundred thirteen. Also, it has one of the six remembrances. There are six remembrances within the Torah um, that God commands us to remember certain things, and one of those remembrances is contained within that. Of course, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So this parasha declares that there is a Torah to be obeyed, and Isaiah speaks of the lawgiver of that Torah. It only makes sense that if God is a king, and he has and rules a kingdom, then there must be a kingdom law. So, uh, you know, it, it seems that what we have in the spiritual will one day be manifest and be mirrored in the physical as well. When Messiah Yeshua comes back and reigns, uh, and, uh, you know, the temple's rebuilt, etc. So that's the, Torah, uh, the half Torah portion for this week. Thanks for watching. Shalom and Shavuot Tov.